Hello and welcome to the podcast. You're here on Seeing Age Before the Show. But it's for good reason. We wanted to get an early start so we can let you get on with your afternoon because guess what? Some people are starting to reopen and and start to get out and about, take care of their errands, the things they've been wanting to do since early March. So good for you. seems that we are embracing the new normal and we are trying to find our way back into the area outside of our living space, outside of our homes, apartments, and so forth. And it's really something to see. So if you have something else to do this evening and you are starting to get out, just remember to be safe, wear your masks, wear your gloves. I was out earlier today doing some food shopping, and so in my situation, I have to wear a mask, I have to wear gloves, and my basket is sanitized before I go into the store, things like that, you know, so we're all getting used to what it's like to start to to go outside again and, and, and be out in the open, but I would just really recommend that you protect yourself. Today's episode is about hand shape. Last week, if you were with us, we were talking live with you about what it means to sit at the piano, sitting at the piano. And so hopefully you had a chance to really take some of that in. And we did announce today that we're going to talk about hand positioning. And so I've decided to call today's episode hand shape at the piano and then if you are available after today's podcast please join us over at the c major radio show because there we write things down we imagine things in writing what does it look like to imagine your hand shape so it's a unique class it's going to be a fun one and it's one of my favorite things to talk about i love talking about how to position your hands at the piano because my students get a kick out of it and I love seeing them enjoy how to position their hands and and I love even when they resist doing it. So bring your hands to the piano for this episode. Better yet, bring someone with you and make a game out of it. You're here on the Hand Shape at the Piano episode. so much for tuning in. I really appreciate that you're here. How should your hands be shaped at the piano? First of all, how you shape your hands and how your hands are shaped is important, but it is not everything. So some of you may agree with me today and some of you may not agree with me because if you've ever had piano lessons and you were with someone who was traditional then you know one of the first things they taught you, or one of the first things they discussed with you, is keeping your hands curved. So sometimes teacher will give you an, the teacher will give you an object to hold to remind you. Sometimes they would recommend putting your hands over your kneecaps and, and cupping your hands that way. Sometimes for small children who are studying for the very first time you have to make it fun make a game out of it and and especially with with children who enjoy cars you may have them hold a little a car and and to say look how you're holding that car you see how your hand is shaped it's just curved it's not straight out if you hold it straight out the car is going to fall out of your hand something like that it could be you know hot wheels or something like that but um hand shape is also your signature 
at the piano. So we're going to be talking a little bit more about that today as well because if you haven't able to think outside of curved fingers, you might have even seen piano players who did not have proper hand shape. And that was for a number of reasons. We'll talk about that. But your hand shape does reveal a lot about you. And that's what I mean. So along those same lines, if you saw someone who wasn't keeping curved fingers or curved hand shape, then you might have thought, what type of training did they have that they're not doing that? Also, something that was really curious to me, let me turn my music down for a moment, because I know you guys have been watching, especially in the greater New York area, you've been watching all the news about coronavirus and COVID-19, and and I pay attention to a lot of things on, on TV, how the person is dressed, how they speak, the, all the details, and so one thing that stuck in my mind was a conversation between New York's governor and his brother. So I don't think I'm out of line for saying this because everybody's talking about Governor Cuomo. And by the way, it is Cuomo and not (laughs) Q-O-M-O. I have to add laughter to that because some of my friends down south aren't sure how to pronounce Cuomo. And then they see it and they think you say the C and the U first and then the rest. But it's Cuomo. Think of it the way you pronounce the word queen. Qu- Qu- Cuomo. Anyway, Governor Cuomo's, Cuomo's brother, Chris, said that he had banana hands. And it was like a, a quick sound bite. It was so quick that if you didn't hear it, you probably would have missed it. And I thought, what does he mean by that? And sure enough, the next time I saw the governor expressing himself and saying some, some things to us that were important to us, I noticed the thumb was a little bit more curved than some people's thumbs. Although, I have, I have to say, I have noticed that a lot of people have this, but I'd never heard that referred to as banana hands. <laughs> so that was new for me. So now the question becomes, if somebody has banana hands, can they play piano? I wonder if Governor Cuomo ever had piano lessons. I really do wonder that. But um, nevertheless, when you're at the piano, the idea is to have a hand shape so that you can play the piano in a way that you imagine yourself playing the piano. So if you never imagine yourself playing the piano using your fingertips, then your hand shape may or may not be curved. You see where I'm going with this? And by the way, since we're talking about hands, we also have to remind you to wash your hands and make sure that when you come to the piano, they aren't all scratched up, that they aren't dirty, they aren't dusty. So (laughs) that's another thing I wanted to throw in there, especially now with the coronavirus and COVID-19 We're talking about personal hygiene. You know, sometimes my students have shown up to the piano with dirty nails and and nails that even though they're long, they still need to be sanitized and cleaned. And so now I think after this, I can expect to see cleaner hands at the piano. Now, gloved hands are now a possibility. Have you ever considered what that feels like? And it's so funny because I had posted on Facebook a while back just because I wanted to protect my hands and and I really didn't want anyone to see my hands on the piano. I wanted to protect what my hands looked like on video. So I wore some gloves and I think I played a little motif or something. Not the instrument, but just the sound that I played. It was just a little bit of a sample of, oh, I know what it was. It was the Cardi B uh, song that had come out. We're gonna talk about her in a moment as well because her hand shape would involve long nails and so we're going to mention something about that too something that we've actually covered here on the podcast anyway i'm going to turn my music back up for a moment you are listening to c major before the show
Thank you again for tuning in to today's podcast. We're talking about how to shape your hands when you're playing the piano. And so I'm going to pause here to say that if that's something that you want to discuss with me or you ever had any sort of insecurity about or you want to consult with me online, you can. You can meet me over at Meet Hook. And if you're following my Instagram and and some of my social media, you'll also see me post some links to my Meet Hook profile over there. So if you're looking for a music teacher, looking for someone to talk with you about piano lessons, meet me over at Meet Hook. You can go to meethook.com and you can also type in app.meethook.com. So shout out to Meet Hook because they've been really giving me a lot of of recognition on online and, and some of my friends are starting to notice. I didn't expect that. I'm really glad to see that. And it's just good vibes. And so I'm going to say a little bit more about them a little bit later because I know that some of you want to get in touch with me and you're starting to ask, How can I contact you? You're starting to request information on how to find me online. So we're going to say a little bit more about that a little bit later in today's podcast. But shout out to Meat Hook. Thank you so much. You guys really rock. I really appreciate the the recognition, as I was saying. And so I'm really looking forward to building my piano clientele over there, if you will. And so we're living in new times. I, I'm really looking forward to, to growing with you guys. Now, I'm going to turn my attention to... Whose handshape do you admire? Now, I have a lot to say about this because I've mentioned my favorite pianist here on on the podcast. And one of my top favorite pianists of all time is Vladimir Horowitz. And the reason for that is because I felt like he was really a showman as well as technically proficient out of this world. And he has... This really great sound, really big sound that is, you don't even really hear that sound much anymore. You have um, pianists that are still around from that era, but to me, his presence was just unmatched. And even on one of his interviews that I listened to, he, he said when he's at the piano, he felt like a king. And I, I know exactly what he's talking about. When you are passionate about something and and when you really feel like you have a lot to give, it, it really can make you feel regal in a way. So I really had a lot of respect for it, some of the things that he was saying in that interview. But I brought this up to say, and I've said this to my students, watch and see how he plays the piano. Is he using a curved handshape or is he not using a curved handshape? I'm going to leave that to you. I'm not going to go online. I'm not going to go online and show you. I'm just going to say, look it up for yourself. Horowitz, H-O-R-O-W-I-T-Z. That's all you need to type in. Type in piano. It'll pop right up. And um, yeah, We'll, we'll say more about some other pianists in a moment. I'm just thinking to myself, I'm thinking what I should do now is talk with you about some of the information that I find in these lesson books. So anybody that has a lesson book, if you study piano, one of the first things, again, that you'll see up front is an illustration of how you're supposed to keep your hands on the piano keys. So I'm looking at a book right now. And it says hand position. And it's telling you that you can pretend that you're holding onto something round. I've even seen in some books where they describe it as holding onto an imaginary bubble. 
So every publisher has to say it in a different way because you don't want to seem as though you're copying someone else and their information and taking their content, blah, blah, blah. But this particular book really does drive home the point of holding your fingers in a curved shape. So let's say if you are holding on to something loosely. In other books, it will say a bubble that you don't want to break. In this case, they're saying, okay, pretend you're holding like a little small ball. Or you can get one. Maybe one of those balls that you use at work. You know, the ones for stress um, relief. And now that we're not in in the office anymore, you may even have this at home. I happen to have one on my counter. So join us later over at the C Major Radio Show because we're going to draw some of these images. And it's going to be so much fun because you'll get to choose which image you want to represent uh, for, for, for your mind. What do you think about when you think of something that will help you achieve that curved handshake? Okay, so hold on to that thought. And then while we're thinking about that, we're also going to think about Thelonious Monk. So another very famous pianist, world famous pianist that I admire. And the reason I admire him is because when I watch his videos, I just thought to myself, wow, you know, he's playing the piano so differently than someone who took classical lessons and even had longer nail length than you would expect I'll say it that way but look for yourself Thelonious is spelled T-H-E-L-O-N I-O-U-S I think Thelonious yeah Monk and I think if you look up jazz piano That may be the best way to find him online and look at some of his videos. So you'll be surprised how fast he was able to move. And then some of his colleagues, his his people that he gigged with, other musicians that were standing around watching him, even just watching him at all, you could just see their faces when he was playing and how amazed they were at how he was able to play with such technical proficiency but again not curved hands not curved hands now I'm going to talk with you a little bit more about the idea between behind curved hands and then when we come back I'm going to tell you about another pianist that I admire and a musician and someone that I've mentioned on the podcast recently but back in a moment so much for being here on C Major before the show. We're talking about how to create the hand shape of your dreams here on the podcast. (laughs) I have to add some laughter to that because it really is not the hand shape of your dreams. It really is what you choose to do. We'll say a little bit more about that too today in today's podcast. But you know what? You can make music without learning to keep your hands curved your fingers curved keep your fingers curved please it's possible to 
play the piano without curved fingers. So that's what we're talking about today. In a minute, I'm going to tell you about another pianist, musician that I admire. She plays piano, she plays keyboard, she plays organ. She's in one of the recent documentaries and, and movie presentations about her life along with her sisters. So we'll say a little bit more about her because I really want you to take a look at her videos and tell me what you think. Just amazing playing, but... Um, if you have a piano teacher, think in your mind how much emphasis that piano teacher puts on keeping your fingers curved. We have a lot to think about. You know, we have to think about correct postures we talked about last week. Now we have to think about whether or not you're going to keep your hands curved or not. And it can really pose a, a very special, unique problem for beginning piano students. Now, I haven't had anyone to quit piano lessons just because they had to keep their hands curved. I haven't had that, but... Think about it this way. If your goal in piano is to play in a way that sounds musical or as musical as possible, if you are playing in a way that's unmusical to your ears or someone else's ears, hand position might be one of those things that you can correct so that you can play more musically, you can play more sensitively at the piano. So think about that. Think about that for a moment. You know, your hand positioning can become a distraction for your teacher. Can be, it can become a distraction for yourself. And as you learn to play with sensitivity at the piano, as you learn to play musically, you want to use your hands and your fingers in a way that will give you the best sound. You know, how loud did you want to execute a note? How did you want to play that note in relationship, in relationship to the other notes that are around it? You know, at the piano, you are supposed to be developing good habits just so you can make the best sound and make the best music you can make. So let's talk a little bit more about making a round hand shape. But before I do that, I just want to mention my favorite gospel pianist. Of course, besides Aretha Franklin, but, you know, she really didn't see herself as a pianist. She saw herself more as a singer, but we all loved her playing the piano. We know that. So... Along those same lines, though, take a look at Twinkie Clark, if you can. You are going to be so amazed. And she plays every keyboard you can imagine. It doesn't matter what it is. She knows what to do when she sits down to the keyboard. So if you see her on the Hammond B3, same thing. She's got the nails going. The fingers are not curved. But yet she's playing just as many notes as anyone who plays Mozart or Beethoven or Chopin, which is so impressive. And same thing on a keyboard. Same thing on a piano. It doesn't matter. That technique is just out of this world, really, for someone who is not keeping her fingers curved. How in the world is she doing that? You know, so the only thing I think is that she has a true gift and it's just amazing what she can do at the piano, not keeping her fingers curved. So check her out if you can. Another pianist that I saw just by accident, really, I was online, this video popped up, this wonderful singer wearing a green dress that was just amazing. And then she sat down to the piano and I said, hey, that's Sarah Vaughn. And sure enough, it was her. And 
She also had nails because if you're a singer, part of your whole look is to make sure your hair is done, your nails are done, you're wearing something nice. And so in her case, her nails were done, perfectly polished. And here's the other clincher. She sat down, ladies and gentlemen, and played a classical piece. Unbelievable. I think she played something by Grieg or Rachmaninoff or something. It was one of those big pieces. And she started it, and then she kind of laughed it off because she was toying with the audience. And then she began to accompany herself. Of course, we talked a lot about chords on on the podcast. So if you're accompanying yourself, nine times out of ten, you don't have to use a classical technique for that that you can just play chords and sing along. So eventually that's what she she did, but it's just amazing to see that. And then for our laughable moment, (laughs) we're going to come back and talk about a couple of today's artists here in the 21st century who definitely have no intention of keeping their fingers curved because they use their nails for fashion. So we're going to talk about that back in a moment and then also when we come back I'll say a little bit more about hand shape you're listening to C Major before the show so much for tuning in. You're here on C Major Before the Show. I'm your host, C Major Porter. And a little bit later over at the C Major Radio Show, we're going to be talking about imagining your hand shape. So bring your pencils, bring your iPads, your mobile devices, your tablets, something to draw with, something to write with, because we get really creative and imaginative over on that podcast. So thank you again so much for being here. So as we continue our talk about hand shape, how do you make a round hand shape? We talked about holding a ball. Maybe imagine you're holding a bubble, holding a small car. And another way you can think of it is if your hands are really tiny, think about holding a cotton ball, one of those large cosmetic cotton balls. And, um, you know, just to give yourself some sort of um, way to imagine holding on something round, maybe like a cloud. Or something like that. So use your imagination. But it's part of having good habits at first. You really want to think about if your fingers are held out in in front of you and you're holding them in a straight manner, right? That they're all going to be different lengths. But if you curve them, then they all become the same length. And so you want your, your fingers to resemble the letter C. Not the not the letter L, but the letter C. Okay? And then if you even want to imagine yourself holding something healthy, like a fruit, like an apple, then you can um, use that imagination too. Okay? So, other ways to think about, you know, holding your hands flat versus curved. Think about what you do when you're giving a a greeting to someone. You wave, right? You wave your hands. But what happens when you just bring your hands down and you let your wrist just hang down and just flop? So lots of things to think about. You know, this is all setting you up for technique a little bit later, okay? And and technique is something that you really want to think about you know, in, your, in your piano journey, if you will. 
Now, the two people that I wanted to mention on today's podcast who are part of our 21st century group of artists, well-known artists, would be Lizzo and Cardi B. And if you ever check out their photos, nine times out of ten, they're going to have long nails. And I think I even saw a picture of Lizzo with, with, it looks like raindrops at the end of her nails. It was so glamorous. But I just thought to myself, there's no way in the world I can play with nails like that. So, if I wanted to play... If I wanted to play something like that in terms of technique, I don't think there's any way I could have on nails like that and play that. Now, here's the other silly thing that I did. I have to laugh. (laughs) I even bought, you know, you can go online like Amazon or something. You can buy one of those nail wraps that's supposed to help you keep your nails perfectly polished. So it only shows that part of the nail that you're going to be painting and then you take it off. So I bought those, not to paint my nails, but just to feel what it would feel like to cover my nails in sort of an artificial tip and to see if I could play with flat fingers, keeping my fingers flat. Wasn't that silly? That was silly of me. I still haven't used it yet, but I think as a pianist, one who's trained, I think I'm committing to the idea of not playing with nails. So you may be happy to know that. Thank you so much. And so, in light of that comment, I'm going to tell you now about Tone Row. You've heard me mention Tone Row here on the podcast, but it's new to me because as we are learning to work remotely, we're learning to work from home and to figure it all out. I have, of course, several options right now. And if you know me offline, you know what those offline options are. I'm not going to mention those those places right now because they're still being developed. They're still rolling out their plans for teachers who can teach online. And I don't want to take anything away from how they are mentioning it online. But I will tell you about Tone Row. I was able to sign up for Tone Row. Thank goodness. Thank you so much to you, you guys over there for letting me in. And so I want to encourage you to visit me over there because it's a place where you can meet and greet me ahead of time. And not that you can't do that on on my other platform that I mentioned earlier on t- today's podcast, but it's just that it's it's really especially meant for pianists and musicians. And so the way they've set it up, they really have put a lot of thought into the lighting and things like that. And um, they have a very specific way that they want to see the lessons go over there. So I'm really excited about building with them because they also allow me to be on their website in a way that gives me a really, really bright spotlight. So thank you so much and shout out to Tone Row. Thank you again for tuning in to Sumerian Before the Show. I just want to give you a reminder to leave the best impression that you can when it comes to your hand shape. You can decide what that is. Are you going to keep a curved hand shape? Or are you going to keep your fingers flat at the piano? Talk it over with your piano teacher. Look it up. Do some research on your own. Watch some of those videos we talked about. We mentioned several artists today that I think that would give you some thoughts about that. And you can decide for yourself. Next week, though, on the podcast, we're going to go ahead with technique. We're going to talk about the importance of technique and artistry at the piano. Another one of my favorite topics. I love talking with my students, the one who... The ones who say they they don't really care for some of the technique things that we do in class. But after a while, they start to see how this is really going to help them going forward. So the importance of this is what we're going to emphasize on next, next week's episode. 
Again, you are invited. You are invited. And I want you there. Draw some pictures with us a little bit later on. Following today's episode, we're going to be over at the C Major Radio Show where we write things down. We're doing some drawing. We're going to draw some pictures of hand shapes and and imagine and reimagine what that looks like. So I'm looking forward to seeing you over there. And so as we come to a close on today's podcast, I want to give some shout outs and also to tell you how you can find us over on our different platforms beyond the ones that I've mentioned already, but our social media and so forth. But shout out first, shout out first to my friends, to my family, to students and prayers for anyone who has lost someone to COVID-19. This coronavirus is something else. It really is. A lot of my musician friends are starting to experience loss in ways that they've never imagined. And they are really upset with anybody who does not take this seriously. So we're just reminding you today as well to wear your masks, wear your gloves, continue to wear your masks, you know, continue to wear your gloves, make your masks as you need to. And find a way to keep your hands covered. And in some cases, you may even want to keep your hair covered. And then as you come back inside, just make sure that you sanitize everything as completely as possible. And just be very conscientious of of how you're going outside because it's still out there. And so just blessings to anyone who is going through anything that is just rough on them right now during this very difficult and complex, complicated time. Now, as we, again, get ready to end our episode today, I want to give you a challenge and an invitation. I want to challenge you to find someone to talk with. Talk with somebody online, a music professional. Make sure that they have a pedagogy-based studio. What is that, C major? What's pedagogy? I would invite you to look it up, okay? And find out for yourself. Pedagogy, P E D A G O G Y. Because any studio that is pedagogy based basically it means research based. So they really know what they're doing with their studios. They're not just saying, here, learn a bunch of songs. They really have a way to break down the knowledge to you so that you get it. There's more than one way to play a scale, there's more than one way to skin a cat. There's more than one way to to do anything on the piano. And so somebody who really knows their stuff, they're going to be able to explain that to you and they'll be able to tell you why they have you doing it. So they're not just teaching you by rote and they're not just teaching you without imagination. Okay, so make sure that you have access to someone who understands pedagogy. And so if I sound... Like, I'm contradicting something that I said earlier. It's only because earlier on I was talking with you about approaching piano lessons as an adult. And that's a different issue. With an adult, you may not want to even do formal or traditional piano lessons. You may learn strictly by rote. And in that case, you just find someone that you're comfortable with, maybe picking up the pieces from your childhood and then running with it. But lastly, I want you to connect with me. I invite you personally to further connect with us here at CMAJ Before the Show 
and the CMAJ Radio Show online. You can find me on Twitter. Find me on Twitter. C Major can be found at, at C Major One. You can follow me over there. For some reason, I don't know why. I I keep fluctuating between 25, 26, 27 followers. <laughs> and I really haven't grown beyond that. But I'm following like 109 people, you know. But um, I think the way they want to see it is that you have more followers than people that you're following. So we're building over there. I'm still getting the hang of the social media thing um, online. It's a lot of fun. But you can find me there. My book is coming out soon. Yes, C Major has a book. Now, this has nothing to do with piano lessons. I'm not writing a book on the Carol Porter method yet. That's coming too. But... The Carol Porter method is going to be about the method and describing how it's been used with my students and not a book telling you how to play the piano. It's not going to be that. It's just more of a discussion. But I also have another book that's coming out soon, and this one is about my memories of my musical childhood. Now, you've heard me talk about my childhood with the piano teachers that I've had and my family, and so I'm ready to share that now. Memories of my musical childhood, what my musical childhood was like in Mississippi. And that's going to be coming out soon. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited about it. I've been thinking about it for a number of years. And so to be able to put that out and share that with you, it's personal. But it's also going to be very edited. So don't worry, I won't be sharing anything that's too personal. But it's all about music anyway. But it may just surprise you, my experience coming up. In Mississippi, I think the number one thing that surprised me is that I didn't turn out to be a blues piano player. I didn't go to New Orleans uh, and, and experience some of the ways to play the piano New Orleans style. It was just, that was just how I came up. So I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I think you're going to like what you read and what I share. Now, my ongoing things that I'm doing, mentioning it to you again. I am available now on Meat Hook. So see me over there for my new teaching schedule on Meat Hook. My new teaching schedule on Meat Hook is out now. What that means is that I refresh it every week. And I put it on the website so you can see my availability Monday through Friday. And this is important because you want to know how to find me online, right? Okay, give me one second. I'm going to take a sip of water. I'm going to be right back to tell you exactly how to find me over there. Okay, I'm back. We're talking about Meat Hook. By the way, Meat Hook is spelled M-E-E-T, okay, not M-E-A-T. And so um, a lot of people are starting to to ask. Not that they're begging. They're not saying, oh, see, Major, please tell us how to find you online. I wish they were, (laughs) but, you know, I don't want to get my ego involved. I don't want anybody to start calling me a narcissist online and all that Um, laughter. (laughs) It's all in good fun. But um, I have had some requests, talking seriously, for how to find me online. And so what's important for you to know is when you come to me online, just by default, I, this is important. I hope you're listening. Let me turn the music down. This is important. You want to keep my website information in a safe place. Put it on your iPhone. Put it on your iPad. App.meethook.com. Look for Carol Porter. That's my given name. C Major is my stage name. C Major Porter. But you can find me under Carol Porter at Meat Hook. And this is important. You want to hold on to this information. And it's important to keep it in a safe place on your phone. Because guess what? It's going to save you money. Hang on to it. C Major, what do you mean? Because if you look there, you'll think, oh, wait a minute. This is expensive. I'm not the most expensive teacher on Meat Hook. But I will say this. That... I'm saving you money because you have a chance to come to me and I will tell you 
exactly what you need to know in one session. I recommend 12 sessions. And then you can decide to go beyond that. But you know, if you want to do like a small little meet and greet, that's available too. But I'm going to save you money by connecting with me online because I'll tell you exactly what you need to know. Have you ever talked with somebody that takes you in circles and they're charging you? They're taking you in circles or they're not really quite sure how to answer your question. That's not going to happen over there. So that's how you're going to save money. You'll get the answers you need when you connect with me online. So you are going to be very sure about what you're getting with me. And you are going to find some value in it because I'm a teacher that's been around for a while doing this mostly offline but that same information and experience I'll be bringing to you online okay so keeping my information handy to find me on meat hook is is very very important okay and equally important is how you can find me on tone row so when you go to tonerow.com also look up carol porter you'll find me there and 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 it's about building a a really good relationship with you online. So if you're an individual, if you are a company, if you are another teacher, you want to do some collaboration online, connect with me over there. We can have that conversation and then go from there. The way we do business, the way we do lessons now and learning, ladies and gentlemen, has completely changed. We're in a new era now. You don't have to be in a school building to have school. You can do everything you need to do online. So I'm very excited about connecting with you. And so, um, you know, let's, let's work on it together, making the best music that we can make. My personality is that I'm a lot of fun. I'm a fun teacher. And I want to see what works for you and your learning. Okay, so as we further close out, If you're ready to take your piano lessons to the next level, now's the time to connect with us. It's a really good time to stay connected with us. If you are interested in contributing to an episode of this podcast, then please send me your email information. You can do that over at Music Glue. I believe all you have to do is put in your name, your email address, and they'll make sure that I get it. And so you may decide to contribute a story or you may decide to contribute Uh, a request, a question. It's up to you how you want to contribute, but we are opening our podcast up to you now for something like that. Also, you can help support the show by giving to my SoundCloud page. Okay, so consider giving today via SoundCloud if that's what you're interested in doing. You go over there. Now, we are not at the professional level yet, but we will be. So you'll see a bunch of numbers that are associated with C major over at SoundCloud. But they do have a button you can push over there to contribute, and I believe it does go to PayPal. So if you want to support the show, I know a lot of people are doing it online. Some of my musician friends even have... PayPal up on their social media. I didn't do that. I'm just using what SoundCloud gave to us. So, shout out to SoundCloud. Thank you so much. And if you don't already know, I do have another podcast called the C Major Radio Show. Now, this is where we draw things and we write things down. I'm looking forward to seeing you over there following today's episode. 
here. That's why we call it C Major Before the Show, because when you go over there, it's a different show and a different effort. But you can also meet me over at C Major's Classroom, where you can find a laugh or two. (laughs) So we try to find the fun and the funny in music making when you join us over there. You can sign up for weekly piano lessons with me online. And don't forget to ask me as many questions as you want before committing to music making. I want to be available for that. Now is the time to explore. We are putting you first. This is about your growth. This is about your self-esteem. This is about your confidence. It's about your musical expression. I'm here for you. I'm here to help you think outside the purple dot. If you don't know what that means, ask me. I'll tell you. But I'm really here to help you glow. I'm really here to help you flow. So speed of flow of learning and lessons is important. Too slowly versus too fast. Too thin versus too thick. Too high versus too low. Your flow has an adjustable rate and you get to decide how far your dreams will take you. Dream big. Thank you again so much for listening to C Major Before the Show. Don't forget, join us over at the C Major Radio Show. Stay safe, and I really, really hope you enjoyed today's episode. Take care.